Section 2.7 is about the physical infrastructure connections of wireless LAN components. Let's get started with the overview of the wireless LAN physical infrastructure. A wireless LAN connects wireless devices like laptops or mobile phones to a wired network through access points or APs and is typically managed by a wireless LAN controller or WLC in enterprise environments. To understand how wireless LAN works in a Cisco setup, we need to know how the APs, WLC, and switches physically connect and how port configurations and link aggregation fit in. So, let's first talk about the key components of a wireless LAN and their roles. Starting with the access point. An access point's role is to provide wireless connectivity to end-user devices. APs are usually connected to access layer switches via Ethernet. The connection can be an access port or a trunk port depending on the wireless LAN requirements. Here are the types of AP deployments. First is Autonomous AP. It operates independently with no wireless LAN controller. And the lightweight AP is managed by the WLC and sends traffic via CAPWAP tunnels. The next key component is the wireless LAN controller. This is a central device that manages and controls all lightweight access points. The WLC connects to a distribution or core switch. And the ports on the WLC are typically 802.1Q trunk ports to handle multiple VLANs, one for each SSID. Next are switch ports and these can be access or trunks. The access port handles traffic for a single VLAN. For example, if an AP provides only a single SSID mapped to one VLAN, you can configure the switch port as an access port for that VLAN. Trunk port handles traffic for multiple VLANs. For example, when an AP carries multiple SSIDs, each SSID might be mapped to a different VLAN. And last is link aggregation. Link Aggregation Group, or LAG, combines multiple physical switch ports into one logical link to increase bandwidth and provide redundancy. WLCs often support LAG to connect multiple Ethernet interfaces to a switch, ensuring high availability and load balancing. Here's an important fact to remember. LAG on a wireless LAN controller is static ether channel. This relies on manually configuring both ends of the connection to be compatible. This means that it doesn't use negotiation protocol like LACP or PAGP. Here's how the physical connection flows. First, the wireless clients connect wirelessly to the access point. Next, the access point connects to a switch, and if it's a trunk port, the traffic is VLAN tagged for multiple SSIDs. Then, the switch forwards traffic to the WLC, usually over a trunk port. Then, the WLC manages the access point via CAPWAP and bridges wireless traffic into the correct VLAN or network. And link aggregation may be used between the WLC and switch to increase bandwidth and redundancy. For exam tips, always remember that single VLAN is for access port and multiple VLANs is for trunk port. When using WLC, LAG is static ether channel and not negotiated. And troubleshooting tip, if users can't connect, check the switch port mode if it's access or trunk and allowed VLANs. A logical link that combines multiple physical switch ports into one for increased bandwidth and redundancy. Carries traffic for a single VLAN.
connects wireless clients to the wired network. Protocol that lightweight APs use to communicate with the WLC. Carries multiple VLANs using 802.1 tagging. Type of Ether channel that a WLC use with LAG.